Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Colson of Orleans Audubon Society, and I'm here to tell you an uplifting story about a young swallowtail kite that we helped rescue. The kite fell from its nest when it was 32 days old and someone brought it to the LSU vet school. Dr. Mark Mitchell treated it for maggots which were covering it. Here the kite is being fed mealworms while the person who's feeding it is wearing a kite mask to avoid the kites becoming imprinted on humans. Dr. Mitchell then sent the kite to wildlife rehabilitator Letitia Lebby at Acadiana Wildlife Education and Rehabilitation. Under her care, it gained weight while living with some young Mississippi kites. Then John Nelson, who's pictured on the right, picked it up from Youngville and brought it to me to condition and release. I have permits to conduct research and conservation work on swallowtail kites, including their rehabilitation. Ordinarily, we would have tried to return this young kite to its nest and its family, but we did not know where it came from. So I housed the kite with this kite model because swallowtail kites are unusually social birds of prey. Here the kite is perched out to enjoy the sun. This natural sunbathing behavior is really cool it allows the kite to use the sun to kill any lice or mites on its feathers. And the sunlight converts compounds for, that are in the oils on its feathers from its preen gland into the active form of vitamin D. The sunning also encourages preening behaviors, which would help to waterproof the kite's feathers, preparing it for release. It loves the sun. We also fed the kite as much natural prey as possible, including grasshoppers, katydids, and small snakes. Shout out to Brett Falterman and Travis Carroll for catching food for the kite. A swallowtail kite has to fly really well to survive, and this young kite needed to learn how to fly. So I exercised it on a creance, which is a long line used in falconry to train birds of prey to fly back to the falconer on command. I flew it once or twice daily, uh, the sessions that lasted at least an hour, to help the kite build up its flight muscles and improve its coordination. It really improved rapidly, and within four days of flying, it was ready for release. The kite was too old to foster into another nest, so we decided that the next best thing would be to release it in a remote area where there were lots of kites. We decided to put a GSM GPS transmitter on the kite, partly because we could find the kite if it failed to find enough food or if it got into trouble. Our partners with the American Bird Conservancy and International Paper agreed that this was a good idea and provided the transmitter. We hoped that the tracks from this kite's transmitter would help us to learn more about how young kites use working forests. The area along the Pearl River that we chose to release the kite had a nest with two fledglings and a communal roost of six kites nearby. John released the kite on the edge of the slough near the roost. The Silver Creek kite flew off and it perched in a nearby cypress tree. The roosting kites immediately flew out of the roost to circle the kite, calling excitedly, it was truly a magic moment. And here the Silver Creek kite is watching the other kites as they fly overhead. He spent most of the day preening and flapped his wings with each gust of wind. Here are his tracks from the first day, showing that he did not move much, which had me worried. He really picked up the pace on days two and three, and he soon crossed the Pearl River. On days four and five, you can see him broadening his horizons and no doubt following other kites. And by days six and seven, it would be hard to distinguish his tracks from that of an adult kite. And he's feeding over a variety of areas, including in the middle of town and over several areas of pine plantation. In a surprising turn of events, the Silver Creek Kid hightailed it cross country to North Louisiana and is now hanging out near Faraday. We hope that he has long lived 
and teaches us much about the early years of a kite's development. It took substantial teamwork to rescue, rehabilitate, and release this young kite. So Orleans Audubon Society would like to acknowledge our partners. Of those not yet mentioned, Gina Kent and Ken Meyer of the Avian Research and Conservation Institute provided logistical support for the tracking device, and the state agencies helped us with the necessary permits. Thanks, everyone.